amazing. Anybody do anything amazing this last weekend? You want to share in the chat? I did it. I actually am wearing it down today. Thank you. I normally just wear it pulled back. You went camping. I'm allergic to camping. Just kidding. I don't like camping. <laughs> Was it fun? Did you have a good time at least? I can't say I don't like all camping. I've had some good camping trips, some horrible camping trips. Lemon blueberry bread. That sounds amazing. Talk to a new friend. That's always good. Shannon's brother got home from school. See, lots of things are happening. That's great. Yeah, Brianna, I'm kind of in the same boat. We didn't really do any. We, we ran errands. I went to Costco. My husband, um, he's an electrician, so we had to go buy parts. I spent some time pushing a cart around so he could put his electrical parts on the cart. That was fun. Um, I did laundry, you know, growing up things like that. Yeah, Antonio, same. I read, a, I read some of my book. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's go ahead and dive in. I did. I walked my dog as well several times because they have to go to the bathroom a million times a day. I have an older dog who, as soon as you say those words, he's already spinning by the front door because he thinks we're going to go out, outside, outside. I can't say that too loud because, but, oh, you got a new dog. That's kind of exciting. <clears throat> yeah, now we're all excited because dogs are better than cats as we've decided as a whole class because everybody agrees, correct? Just kidding, we don't wanna start that whole conversation again. Whoa, Chloe, jet skiing, I would probably break something. Oh, Labradoodles are super cute, Coco. Okay, let's refocus. Thank you guys for sharing. It's always good to connect and see what's going on in your lives. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to check in um, on the argument plan, kind of submitting the essay, citing your sources, all of those pieces. We have about, well, we have exactly two weeks until our spring break, which is kind of weird because it kind of feels like we just started this class. Um, so we have two weeks until spring break, which it's kind of also weird because my kids were just on spring break this last week and now they go back to school today. Um, it would have been nice had everything aligned in the calendars, but that's silly. Um, but, you know, what, what, you know, it's not like they did anything anyway because of COVID. Everything is still kind of shut down here. So they played a lot of video games. But your essay is going to be due <clears throat> this week. And again, as you're submitting it, if you need to revise, I will give you feedback. You can revise and resubmit. So don't get like super stressed that it has to be absolutely perfect before you submit. Obviously, you want it to be almost perfect, right? Or, you want to review it and make sure that you know you're good to go but we're going to talk about that today we're going to talk about citing your sources and how to do that um there were a few questions about the interview i want to make sure you guys are good to go with that and then we'll have an exit ticket and we'll be done for the day all right so the first thing i want to do is we're going to do a waterfall chat and so i'm going to give you guys a few prompts to kind of see where you're at but i don't want you to press enter until i tell you to press enter um and so <clears throat> excuse me i gotta clear my throat Can we Goodness, my, I have too much almond milk in my coffee and it's making my throat a little bit raspy. Okay, so first things first, first question. I just, before you type anything, I just wanna know how are you doing right now? And it can be, personally, I'm doing amazing. I'm a little tired. Um, I probably need to make more coffee, but probably not because I've definitely had two shots of espresso and that might be enough. It could be, I'm a little overwhelmed with my essay. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. It could be, I still need to interview somebody. It could be, I got a new puppy and now I'm a little bit stressed because I didn't do my homework, whatever. Where are you right now? And so you're going to type your response. Don't press enter yet. Um, how are you? And so it can be personal. It can be school. It can be, I just want to know, how are you? So everyone should be typing a response. Don't press enter yet. If your response is like my own kids, good. Just good. No explanation. That's fine as well. 
Okay, does everyone have a response? I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds to finish typing your response. And then when I tell you to press enter, you're gonna press enter and we're gonna have a waterfall of responses. And then I'm gonna give you a second prompt. Okay, five more seconds. Okay, everybody press enter. Oh no, I'm seeing a lot of overwhelmed and stressed and tired and some good and some okay. Okay, hold on. I'm going to I'm going to go up the waterfall real fast. Stress, stress, tired, stress. Oh no. Okay. Well, hopefully after today, tired, tired. You know what? I hear you. It's a Monday. I wake up at 4 a.m. so that I can teach your guys' class. So you're welcome for that. Um, however, it does make it a little bit tired, but I did go to bed early last night. So I hear you though. Tired is an understatement sometimes. Okay, second question. Ready? I want something good. Let's see, second question. Um, okay, so this is important. Where are you in your persuasive essay? So don't press enter yet, just type, where are you in your persuasive essay? It can be, uh, I haven't started yet, which hopefully you're not there yet. If you are, maybe you're one of the ones that's a little stressed and that's okay. It can be, I'm totally done, which I don't think anybody is yet and that's okay. Maybe, maybe you are. It can be, I'm working on it. It can be, I just started working on it. It can be right, wherever you are. Don't press enter yet. Mara got a little excited, it's okay. Okay, go ahead. Where are you? Haven't started yet. Oh my gosh. That makes me nervous. Halfway-ish working on it. Okay. I got a plan. Okay. Okay. Working on it, working on it. Okay. So it's good to know where you guys are at. Let's keep in mind. So it is due technically Thursday. The permanent zero deadline though is going to be April 2nd. Just kidding, April 1st, because it does need to be turned in before. Um... Oh, Elena, that's super nice. We're going to talk about the interview for a second, too, because it doesn't have to be super scary. So let's talk about the interview in a second. Um, but it, it does need to be turned in before spring break. OK, so if you're kind of in this place where you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm feeling super overwhelmed, do know that the permanent zero deadline is April 1st. OK, so you do have a little bit of wiggle room, right? But you do want to you do want to kind of get caught up before April 1st. Okay. So, thank you guys for your waterfall chats. So this week, right? So we have help desk at 5 p.m. today. There is the writing lab today at 2. If you want to jump into the writing lab, um, you can, if you have your paper and you want to have it peer edited, that's a great place to jump in. You don't have to make an appointment. You can just jump in. Um, today, you guys do have discussion 2.2. And then the argument plan, um, we are going to talk about today in class. Um, and then Brianna and Elena, let's, let's hold that for a minute because I want to talk about the interview too. Um, and then Wednesday help desk at 11 a.m. You guys are drafting your essay, working on it. You guys are going to submit it. There is this like floating presentation um, in um, lesson 16. Do not do that presentation. I've tried to hide it. I think it's hidden. If it pops up somewhere or you read something that says in the presentation, you're going to just ignore that. You are not going to be doing that presentation. Okay. So if you see something that says in the presentation for 2.16, just ignore that presentation. You're not doing a presentation on your persuasive writing, okay? Does everyone got that? If you see it, just ignore it, okay? Next week on Tuesday, you do have the unit exam. So on Monday, we're gonna do just like a quick review, check in for the unit exam, and then we're gonna be moving into um, unit three and then spring break. And then we'll continue unit three after spring break, okay? Any questions about this week before we talk about the interview and the writing plan and all of those pieces? Okay. Okay, so what you should have already done. Hopefully everybody has a topic, right? And so your topic, I got a couple emails about topics. Your topic does not have to be something super technical. Um, oh my goodness, it's raining again today, you guys. It has been raining for about a week and a half straight. I'm kind of over the rain. 
the sun is just now coming out and I just see this huge glooming rain cloud. Okay, I'm over it. I'm not gonna look outside. Okay, so you should have a topic. It doesn't have to be, you know, the impacts of global warming on society. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, does um, social distancing really make a difference in COVID, right? It doesn't have to be something that has like super science, right, research pieces. It does have to be something that you can find some research on. But as you know, which I hope you know, you can find just about anything, right? You can find an article, you can find a blog post, you can find, right, something that supports just about anything. Because I know in just the last persuasive writing task, when we asked the question of which is a better pet, cats or dogs, right? I got several <laughs> assignments submitted with some research, right? With some links to this article says cats are better because that's research, right? And so when it says that you need to have like some research, a source and an interview, that source doesn't have to be like, according to NASA, right? Cats make better pets because, but it could be according to Family Magazine, right? Or according to, right, the Humane Society or according to this person who wrote this blog, they, they feel that cats make a better pet because, right? And then your interview, it doesn't have to be, I mean, some of you actually have some pretty cool interview um, sources, which is awesome. Some of you happen to have some interesting family members, which is also pretty awesome and tricky of you. Um, but even if you don't, well, that's, I shouldn't say, even if you don't have interesting family members, I'm sure you guys all have interesting family members. Um, how, how should I say that? It's not make that sound bad. But even if your family members aren't necessarily like aligned with your topic necessarily, um, you know, like, for example, if I'm doing research on if cats are better than dogs, which is apparently going to be our topic for the rest of the semester, um, I could ask my husband, right? Like, which do you prefer and why? And I can use his information in my essay, right? Or I could talk to my brother, or I could talk to my neighbor, or I could talk to, right? So your interview itself doesn't have to be with some famous person or with somebody that works for an organization or with somebody at NASA or with, right, with a COVID expert. I know a few of you are doing COVID as your topic, which is super relevant, right? Everybody right now has a perspective about COVID, right? And so your interview person doesn't have to be, right, a famous person or a person that works, you know, in a hospital or, right? And so one, you're going to choose your topic. Again, the topic doesn't have to be this huge topic. So if you're still struggling with a topic, it just has to be something that you can choose aside, right? And that you can find a little bit of information on, okay? But knowing that you can Google just about anything and you just need to have two sources like don't stress so much about like the significance of that topic because you're going to run out of time yeah the second part is your interview right and so this is a human source so this can be a person that you call on the phone it can be a person that you email it can be a person that right you interview in person obviously making sure that you're practicing social distancing and all of those safe pieces so the interview is one source, it is one primary source. Um, and so for the interview assignment, another question that I'm getting a lot is what am I submitting for this? So in the interview assignment itself, it has, um, you're gonna submit a transcript of the interview. So you're gonna type out your interview questions with their responses, and then there's an evaluation. And so the evaluation is essentially, how did the interview go? And do, is the interview information going to be helpful to your essay, right? So how um, you can interview, yeah, you can interview anybody that will potentially have um, a perspective on your topic, right? So yeah, it can be friends, it can be grandma, it can be an aunt, it can be, right? I was gonna say a pet, but unless you can talk to your pets, which that should be a whole nother conversation. I don't think the pets would be a reliable source. I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, it can be anybody that right they can have it feedback a perspective on your topic so yes this is for the essay so you need to have one source that is 
research evidence, right? And then this is your interview. So there's two sources. And yes, you use this for your argument essay. So whatever your interview questions are. So if you're right, if your topic, if you go back to your topic, if your topic is pets, dogs are better than cats, right? My interview questions should then be, right? Well, you know, which do you think is better, dogs or cats? Why? Right. So that I'm gonna use some of those information, right? in my essay, right? Yes, um, Jason, that might be a little bit tricky, right? Interviewing your pets for pets might be a little biased, right? Because so in that evaluation part, right? And so a few of you have submitted your interview, you missed the evaluation part. So make sure you go through, if your grade is something that you didn't think, you're like, if you got half credit, look at the feedback, you might have been missing the evaluation piece. So just go back, look at your questions. At the very top of the assignment directions, there's a few questions that you need to answer. It says to list two to three paragraphs answering those questions. Essentially, you wanna make sure that the information that you're getting from the interview can be used in your essay. I wanna scroll up through the chat. Somebody asked, um, Mara, yes, you are citing the person in your essay. Philip, yes, you're using the argument in your essay. And Elena, yes, for the essay. So you want to make sure that that the questions that you're asking, right, are specific enough that the responses that you're getting, right, can be used in your essay. Okay. And so that's part of the evaluation too. Okay. So one to five, one being, I still have no idea what you're talking about, Mrs. Federley. I think you've lost your mind. And five being, okay, totally got this now. Let me know in the chat where you're at right now for the interview. Okay. Okay. Okay, that makes me feel better. A three is okay. A three is, I think once you read the directions, you find a person, you'll be good to go. I'm glad there's no ones. Makes me feel a little bit better about life. Okay. Okay, so the planning, this is technically due tomorrow. Again, permit zero deadlines inching up into next week because we do have spring break everything needs to be kind of submitted by spring break because that's technically the end of the quarter how is that possible you guys where does time go i would like to know we are going to start reading lord of the flies next week which is one of my favorite books if you haven't read it already that's good but if you have we're going to dive deep into lord of the flies um but we just have a couple months left it's kind of crazy um anyway so Assignment plan is essentially the outline, okay? So what you're going to be doing is you're gonna outline your argument essay, right? Thinking about, right, what research do you have, what evidence, that's the evidence, right? What's your hook? How are you gonna hook your audience? How are, what's your thesis statement, which is your claim, right? So cats are better than dogs, dogs are better than cats, right? What are your main ideas? What's the counter claim if you have one and your conclusion? Okay, so you are literally just outlining for the argument plan. It is just the outline of your essay. Okay, so even if you haven't started, which is okay, if you're kind of in this wiggly middle ground of like, I have a topic, I need to do my interview, you can still do the argument plan and get that submitted because it's just the outline, right? You should have a general idea of what, what information you need or what you need to find. You might have, right, your research beyond beyond the evidence or beyond the interview, right? So definitely start working on this. You should include, you should include, yes, the counterclaim, um, even if it's just, just a sentence. Because that was, that's part of the rubric and the, the directions. Yes, Jack, thank you for asking. Um, you can put it all together. You can choose, right? Um, if you want to put it, in this structure, if you want to write it out in this structure, it's really up to you as long as you have, again, introduction with your hook and pieces. You have the three body paragraphs with reasons and evidence, including your concession, rebuttal, counterclaim, and then your conclusion with the call to action, right? Okay, so we need to talk about citing sources. I, I um, Within your guys' first, that mini persuasive activity we did last week, maybe the week before, it feels like it was so long ago, but it was only last week, I think. Um, several of you, I said, hey, you guys did a great attempt at MLA and text citations, or you really need to focus on this. You need to give credit to your sources. 
anytime, anytime you use research or you use something from your interview, you use anything, even if you paraphrase it, if you write it in your own words, but it came from a source, you have to give credit to that source whether it's at the beginning of the paper, at the middle of the paper, within the paper, okay? I always say it's better to oversight than to undersight, okay? And so we're gonna practice this as this is kind of your first attempt at adding research and reviewing MLA in-text citations. Um, we're gonna show, I'm gonna show a quick video here in a second that kind of walks through it, but you wanna really, really attempt and practice this with this essay because as we're, we are gonna move into a bigger research essay and i want to make sure that we are on it right so i can see where you're at right now with this essay and give you feedback and support right and then we can keep moving forward with that but it is super important because you don't want to i don't think anybody would intentionally plagiarize um but you don't want to accidentally plagiarize and so anytime you take somebody else's information even if you write it in your own words if you paraphrase it if you summarize it you have to give them credit Okay, and what that credit looks like is it's quoted at the end of the sentence, okay? And so, and then you also include that in your works cited. I think I have an example. Give me a second. Okay, so this is the works cited, right? And so some of you guys have this already within, you did it for your interview, which is awesome. Some of you have done it for your, um, your previous persuasive short writing, right? But this is where you start to list those sources that you've used, right? So your works cited page, super important. For this, you're going to have at least two sources. You have your interview, right? And so you can look up, um, I'm going to type it in the chat, MLA, ooh, MLA works cited and MLA in text citations. So MLA, if you don't know, there's several organizations that create these rules for how to format and structure papers. There's APA, which is the American Psychology Association. There's Chicago somebody, there's Turbin, there's MLA. MLA is the Modern Language Association. So their rules are the rules that you follow in English classes for the most part when writing essays, okay? So Citation Machine is super helpful. Easy bib is helpful. Cite this for me. I'm going to put a few of them. It's an extension. It, correct. It's not always accurate, but when you're attempting it, it's a good start, right? Um, so MLA, Modern Language Association, creates these rules, right? They tell you you got to write in 12 fonts, that you should double space things, that you should have titles look a certain way, that you have parentheses to show things, that your commas go here, right? So all of these organizations have different types of rules. As you progress through your educational adventure, depending on what discipline you go into, right? So if you go into a more math or science focus, you're probably gonna write more APA formatting. Um, like for my doctorate's degree, it was a lot of sciencey researchy stuff. So it was all APA, which is totally different than MLA. So you have to learn all these rules and read these books about how to cite your papers which is so much fun, you guys. I can't even tell you um, how many spaces you have to put after a period, all of these crazy rules that, to be honest, <laughs> in the scope of the long run, I don't even understand. However, MLA is what we're gonna focus on, right? Because that's what we focus on in English, Modern Language Association. And so as you're starting to work on these sites, if you're not sure how to add an in-text citation for your interview, Google MLA in text citation interview. It is going to be the person's last name in parentheses after anything that they said, but it has to be connected to that sentence. Okay. So it stays within the punctuation. And so I'm going to show a quick video that kind of walks through. Oops, hold on. Let me go back. Walks through this. Please hold. I have to find my playlist that disappeared. There it is. Here we go.
Okie dokie. So they always have to throw in advertisements. I swear, all YouTube videos. Um, okay, let's go back to our slides. Okay, so again, with this essay, I wanna see what you can do, right? And so I will give you feedback on your in-text citations. I want you to read, review the feedback. And as we move forward, right, I'm not gonna, as long as you attempt in-text citations, as long as you have a work cited, even if, what's up? Even if, sorry, my dog is pacing, lay down. Even if it's not formatted super correctly, it's okay, okay? Because I wanna see where you're at and I will help you format. I'm not gonna take off points as long as you have something, okay? Does that make sense? As long as you have an attempt at in-text citations, as long as you have an attempt at a works cited page, you're good to go, okay? I will help you with the formatting as we keep going because it is, it's tricky, right? And there's sites that can help you. And like Philip said, like sometimes they're accurate, sometimes they're not accurate. Um, even, even as you move forward, like through college, right? And if you have to write stuff professionally, like there's editors and there's people whose job it is to make sure that all of this is correct, right? Like when I was writing my dissertation, it's 187 pages with 75 sources. I had somebody who's who I paid to help me make sure everything was good to go, right? So it's not the expectation that you're going to memorize how to do this 100% all of the time, okay? Okay, so next, moving forward, remember we are not doing the oral presentation. So if you see that assignment 2.16 and it says, in your presentation of your persuasive, just ignore that, pretend that that's not happening, okay? If you see it somewhere, I tried to hide it everywhere. I don't know if I, I found all of the pieces. You know how sometimes it, it references the assignments and some of the lessons, just ignore it. Just pretend it's not there. Don't stress if you see it. Okay, so setting yourself up for success. How to be successful moving forward. Greatest opportunity, stay on track. Work on your essay a little bit each day. Revise, edit, revise, edit. One of my biggest pieces of I guess it's not feedback, but one of my biggest pieces, advice, that's the word I was thinking of. Um, read your essay out loud to yourself before you submit your final draft. Have your learning coach read it. Ask questions if you have questions. Make sure, right, that you're trying the in-text citations, that you have a works cited page. Um, Brianna, it's okay. I'm glad you're here when you can be here. Internet is crazy. I know we don't have control over that. Um, the reason I say read your essay out loud to yourself is because sometimes when I'm reading them, I notice that sometimes you have multiple words or you'll you'll catch some of those really small errors when you read it out loud to yourself that when you read it in your head, you don't necessarily catch. If you've ever seen um, online, sometimes they have those quizzes or those like pictures, it's like you can read this, right? And the words are all jumbly and crazy. That's because your brain will read and decode it, right? More than, faster than, right, you're actually reading it. And so when you read your essay, you're reading it, but you're not actually reading it until you're reading it out loud. I know that that sounds a little crazy, but that's my tip. Read it out loud before you turn it in because I don't wanna be the first person to read it. And so even though you wrote it, you didn't necessarily read it, okay? Again, ask questions. I'm, I am available. Sometimes like it is a, it is a different time zone. Um, I don't always work on the weekends. I try, I worked last night. I caught a few of you that emailed me late Friday evening. Um, I try to get everything within 24 hours, but sometimes, right, sometimes it's a little bit off. Don't stress. I'm here. If it's, a, you know, if you're trying to hit that permanent zero deadline, I am, I am super flexible. So don't, don't stress. Like, don't freak out. Never freak out. I'm here for you. We got this, right? Um, yeah, Ava says totally got, yeah, I, I have to read stuff out loud too because otherwise you just, you skip it sometimes in your brain. All right, exit ticket. And then I'm gonna be here if you guys have any questions or concerns. Otherwise, we're gonna keep chugging along. Um, share something that you feel you're gonna excel at in writing your essay and something you might struggle with or you might need some support with. You can either type that in the chat um, to share or you can just send me, um, oops, send me, a questions and answer chat so that I can see it privately. Otherwise, let me know if you guys have any questions or concerns. Have an amazing rest of your week. I have help desk today at 5 p.m., Wednesday at 11 a.m., Skype, email, whatever works for you. I am available to help you. Have an amazing rest of your day, week. Happy Monday.
Thank you, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, thank you. It's okay. Try your best, Jason. Try your best. Yep. It's it's an attempt, right? Make an attempt and I will help you. So you guys hanging out, let me know if you have any questions, if you need any help. I'm here to help you. Natasha, I think starting sometimes is always the hardest part. Why don't you just choose a different time for class? Like, you? you have to get up at four. That seems mm. early. Because I'm a principal and I work a full time job too. Oh. <laughs> I would, but I actually I like I like teaching in the morning because then I'm done teaching. I don't mind getting up at four. I obviously have enough energy and drink way too much coffee. <laughs> I would need to go to bed at like six to wake up at four. Oh wow! No, I I went to bed. I go to bed at like nine, eight, nine. Yeah. I remember um, the first week orientation. We had to get up like um, since it's East Coast. You would have had to get up at like three a.m. or something. But I'm just on the West Coast, like in California, so we had to get up at like five for the first week orientation and all that. I hope classes aren't going to be at this time too. Yeah, it's it's not bad. I only teach three days a week, so it's it's fine. <laughs> Bye, Natasha. All right, anyone else have any questions or concerns?